Hello friends and welcome to part 9 of our Fast API tutorial. Uh, in this video we are going to be talking about nested models in our request body. Uh, so without further ado, let's move along. Um, this is exactly where I left it. Like I, I just finished recording the last video, the, the very, very long five and a half minute video. Um, so I didn't get a chance to clean any of this up. So let's go ahead through here really quickly. We are going to comment this out. Hit save. Auto detect. We're good. Part. Oh, wait, no, hold on. One thing I have to do. I need to commit this before I do anything else. There. Good. Okay. Let's create a new branch. I think we're on part nine. I don't know. I'm pretty sure we are. Okay, now let's go ahead and comment this out. Part nine, body nested models. Now we refresh this page and we're good. Nothing. Now, let's go ahead in here and let's declare an item. We're talking about request body. So again, we need to extend base model. We will say name is a string, description, is a string or none. By default, we'll set to none. Price is a float. Tax is a float or none equals none. And one way that you can that you can nest models is by saying something like tags is going to be a list. And we just declare it to the empty list as our default parameter. So now if we go in here and we say app.put items item ID and we will set async def update item item ID is an integer item is an item. Now again item ID And we will say item, item, and return results. We hit refresh on our page over here. And we hit try it out. And we can do one, two, three, and five, eight, hello. And let's see what happens. We got a 200 response. We got tags is going to be just a list of items. It's five or eight or hello. Now what we've done here is we're just saying that tags is going to be a list. We're not saying anything about the type of list, nothing like that. We're just saying pass in a list of things. Okay. Well, we're using Pydantic. We're using, you know, I don't want to say type safety, but we're using type checking. So this, this is, is no good. We don't want this. We want to say what specific kind of list it's going to be. Now, if you're using anything before um, Python 3.10, you're going to need to, from typing import list, we're, we're using 3.10 in this, so we're not gonna do that. So here we're just gonna say tags list of strings equals an empty list. Now, I'm gonna actually just copy and refresh the page, try it out. One, two, three. Let's go into here and paste it. And we got this. That's strange. Why did that work? I'm kidding. I know why I know why it worked. It's because it converts it from an int into a string because we're declaring it a string. If we were to change this into an int, we then hit execute. Hey, we're gonna get an unprocessable an unprocessable entity. We're saying that value is not a valid integer because it can convert an integer like five into a string or eight, but it cannot convert a string hello into an integer. If we were to include this and get rid of the hello, it should work. Yep, because it can convert the five from a string and the eight 
into integers. Now let's copy this whole thing. Let's refresh the page. I actually don't know if this is going to work. So let's try it out. One, two, three. Execute. Yeah, so it still went through. So the Swagger documentation can't actually check the request body here like it does sometimes for the, uh, you know, the, the path parameters or the query parameters. But it, it will still check the types when you submit the request. Okay, so let's put this back to a string for now just so that things don't break right now. Um, and then let's, uh, let's move on just a little bit. Okay, next thing we can do is we can use the set type. And I mean, let me just backtrack for a second. It's not a set type, but what we can do over here, we'll say set. Let's refresh this. Now let's just try this out. One, two, three. And for our tags, let's say, hello, world, hello. and hit execute and notice what it returned it returned these it didn't do what the set should do because if you know what a set does it actually returns only the unique unique items and that's because we also need to set this to a set so let's go back up here I want to copy this whole thing because I don't have to type again I don't like typing one, two, three. Now, and here's the and here's the key difference. We will see we only get hello in world. Okay? So it's a subtle difference. You know, there, there's a lot that you can do with this, but you need to make sure that that the typing actually matches up. Okay? So this this is this is a nice start. Okay, this shows us how we can nest many things in a thing. But this is not actually nesting models. So now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to say class image base model and we'll say URL is a string name is a string. So now what we will do is we will say um, image is going to be an image or none which by default will be none. And let's just make this an empty list. It doesn't really matter. Now we refresh our page over here. And now here's where the nesting models really comes in. So you can see here, we, we have all of our, our general fields that we've declared up here, but this pretty much, it, it, it's almost like it sets up a, a dictionary within the dictionary, which is a nice, a nice little feature here. Uh, you know, you can pass in, um, if we just hit, if we do one and hit execute, it will it will work, everything will work as we anticipate. Okay, so that's a nice little um, initial way to set up um, um, nesting your models. But there's one thing that, that's, that's a little weird with this. You know, you can see here we're just passing in the word string as our URL. Well, how, like, how do we want to, you know, how do we want to handle this? Well, one way we can do it is we can say, um, string equals field and we will say regex equals and let's go to I hate regex dot IO uh, where is it where is it where is it URL there we go copy let's try this Nope, that's not it. Uh, hold on one second. I need to import this. Okay. Sorry about that. I had to pause it for a second. I had a brain fart. Um, we don't actually have to import the uh, regular expression library. Um, if we recall correctly, all we need to do is we need to declare these. For the regex, it takes a string. So then we just copy this. We paste it in between those two characters there, we hit save. And now we can have this regular expression validation right here. We hit execute and we get an unprocessable identity or unprocessable 
unprocessable entity. I don't know why I keep saying identity. HTTPS google.com. This should work. No, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Well, we're not going to worry about that right now. This is just an example. You can you can play with the regular expression if you want to. Um, this was leading into uh, the next thing that we can do is we can use Pydantic, and we they actually have some of these built-in validations. So what we can do instead is we can let's come up here usage um, 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 field types. So you see over here we have all of these different field types that we can use. There's booleans, callable, type, type var, all that sort of good stuff. Let's type, let's do a search on URL. Here we go. You can see we have HTTP URL that we can import from Pydantic and it will have that sort of built-in validation. So let's import HTTP URL and let's set this to HTTP URL. We hit save and we let it reload. Okay, there we go. Now, if we come in here, one, two, three, we still get an error because we're not expecting to get, you know, it should be a URL and we're not passing in a URL. Um, but this is much more readable than trying to use the regular expression. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's just easier, okay? It's just, if you want to use regular expressions, if you want to do that, that's fine. If you're really good at it, that's great. I'm clearly not good at it, so I like to use built-in help. Now if we type in HTTPS colon colon backslash google.com and we hit execute, now we get a valid response because our Pydantic help found it. You can see there's a whole bunch of different kinds of, uh, of URLs. There's a Postgres, there's, there's a lot of really great stuff in, um, in Pydantic that we can use uh, to validate special types. Um, you should really be using these anywhere that you can. Unless, so red, regular expressions should be kind of the, the fail safe. If none of this stuff works, if you need something very special and very custom, then you go ahead and use regular expressions. Otherwise, use the built-in stuff. It's there for a reason. This is built around it for a reason. It's very helpful there. So that's, I mean, that's generally it. Um, we can, there are a few other things we can do. We can say, you know, let's say we don't want it to just, just be one image. We want to pass in a list of images. Well, we refresh our page here. So now, one, two, three you can see here is given us an array of, um, or a, a, using Pythonic talk, a list of dictionary objects. So we'll say URL for this is google.com, Google, and this is youtube.com, YouTube. We hit execute and we get a valid a valid request response cycle. Um, you can nest models within models if you want to. So let's go back into here really quickly. So we have our image, we have our item. Let's make one more. Class offer base model. Name is a string. Description is a string or none. Price is a float, and items is going to be a list of item. Now down here, what we will do, uh, let's add in app.post offers async def create offer. Offer is going to be an offer. Offer is a funny word return offer. So now we go and refresh our page. Let's close this up, create offer. So now you can see, again, we're, we're just nesting things. So this is our actual, our actual item here. Um, what we can do here if we want to 
equals um, body embed equals true. And what this will do is this will put offer at the very top level here, as we anticipated, name, description, price. We have our list of items, which themselves have name, description, price, tax, tags. They have their image images, I should say. They're um, a list of images. Um, so there, I mean, there's really no no limit to to what you can do. This should still um, this should still break because we don't have a valid URL here. You can see here, invalid or missing URL scheme. So um, and it looked for the body, the offer element of the body. It searched the items, grabbed the first item, searched the images, grabbed the first image, and the URL is where it broke. So that's how you can kind of read through that to figure out where the error is. Okay. Um, we can do uh, one other thing. App dot post images multiple. If you want to upload multiple images, async def create multiple images. So what we can do here is we can just return a, or we can set a, a list of um, top level body. Uh, you don't have to declare it as, you know, you can see here we had this kind of became a dictionary object. This was a dictionary instance, I should say, not a dictionary object, that's redundant. Um, well, here, if you just want your top level to be a list of images, well, you can just make it a list of image and it will still recognize it um, as request body. We can say, if we want to, body embed equals true, which again, if you want to be explicit, we'll say images has to be this list of items. Or we could take out embed equals true, and it will just be at the top level. Okay? So again, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. Um, we can add in, um, I'll do one last thing very quickly, post, uh, let's just say blah, uh, async def create some blahs. We're going to say blahs dict int float. So like we pass in just an arbitrary list, um, we can pass in an arbitrary dictionary. Return blahs. Create some blahs. Um, create some blahs. There we go. Okay. So that's that's kind of it. There's not really too much um, too much else. You can just go um, and you can see here value is not a valid integer because we're declaring this as an int, so you can't convert that. So we'll say zero, one, one, two. I don't know why I'm doing it like this, but now we hit execute and we're good. This is what we anticipate getting because we said the key has to be an integer, value has to be a float. Okay, so now. Now, with all of that, I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, so in the next video, um, we are going to uh, go into a little bit more depth in, in request body. But we're going we're gonna to kind of veer a little bit away from the functional use of this sort of stuff and, and more get into how it interacts with the open API schema and how we can get a little bit more information like this doesn't really this this is helpful but it's not great um, so we're gonna get into ways that you can you can actually display examples of instead of an example like this you can actually show you know some more descriptive examples um, in your schema that provide a little bit more information to the user um, that's gonna be hopefully a short video and then we're gonna kind of get into some more some more technical stuff again. Okay, I will see you in that next video.